Welcome to Closer to Venus. I'm Johnny Burke, and today's guest is Gemma Norris. She is a health therapist, founder of the Infinity Hub, and host of the Voice podcast. Her work is focused on holistic well being, soul health, and planetary well being. And today we'll discuss the rise of the divine feminine and what role it plays in helping us remember who we are. Gemma, welcome to the program. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for having me. Excellent. I'm looking forward to discussing the rise of the divine feminine. But before we do that, I do believe this is the first time I've heard about planetary well-being. Tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. So how I believe and what we're here for is to heal our planet through many aspects in terms of, I mean, we pretty much know what needs to be done with this, with our planet in terms of toxicity. However, we heal our planet through our healing ourselves and how we take that individually through our health. So we individually, collectively are within this energy field that we're holding what I believe is a massive plaque of fear that free will has created uh, through thousands of years or generations and civilizations. And we are here to shift that low vibration. And we do that through our health. To shift from fear to love, or is it something else? To love. Everything for me, I believe, comes back to love. To love yourself and accept yourself is, is that, that vibration, which is actually the same vibration as gold, the frequency. All right. I like that. We're, we're definitely going to get into that, too, because that's I think that's the first time I've heard about um, gold being the same frequency. Do you say it's the same frequency of love? Did I get that right? Yeah, so it's about 520 hertz. And when you look at gold, it's it's the same banding, the same frequency as love. So the Sofigo frequencies that music were based on 520. And so gold itself is actually the same frequency. Music based on 520, because I'd play guitar in bands when I was younger. And the way I was taught was that Basically, everything we did was in 440. I've also heard about music composed in 432. Again, this is completely new to me, but you're saying there's music that is composed in 520? It was the Sofrigo frequencies, and if I pronounce that correctly, and that's to do with the variations of different frequencies, like 432 is, is very healing as well, and 520 is another healing vibration to to work music through yeah so i mean i'm not that's not my field of expertise but in terms of the research and that i have looked into that is where the vibrations which you can correlate to emotions as well so emotions will have a frequency and sounds have their various frequencies and it's it ultimately comes back to the the energetic frequency that we're vibrating and resonating at. Isn't it true also that the frequencies of sound and sight are quite wide and what we as humans are able to access is actually a very narrow sliver for a lack of another, a better description of those frequencies. Is that true? Yeah. So I, in terms of sight, I mean, you've got the, you've got the, the visible light spectrum and that's it it's very small and then you go beyond that don't you and actually interestingly a bee can see beyond what we can see and it's the variations of light that emanates around flowers and that vibration so yeah we have a very limited at the moment i'm saying this i'm getting this uh, intuitively sense of just hang on a minute just hold that it's we yes at the minute we have that this is, this is news to me, actually. So, um, um, but however, I think our brains have the capacity and our hearts have the capacity. This is to see greater. Okay. So we have the potential to see beyond that, but it's not necessarily from our minds. It's actually our hearts that will allow us to see that greater vibration, that frequency. In the heart, but not the mind. Okay, yeah. I'll buy that. That makes sense to me. Now, the Infinity Hub... How did that start? And otherwise, how did you find yourself on this path? 
So I've been in health and wellbeing for uh, quite some time now and just purely from the interest of actually Reiki, energy healing. And then that just took me down the process of anatomy and physiology and just got completely fascinated by the body and the miracle that it is. And you can never get bored well, I can't never go bored, Re- understanding in the body in the detail that it is. And it was literally COVID that struck. And for me, because I wasn't allowed to work on people because of the sort of lack of contact that you were allowed, I was actually getting really quite frustrated that I couldn't help people, but also of the narrative that was going out there, that you had to be held in fear, that you nothing you could do until you had these miracle vaccines come along. And I didn't like that story. I didn't like that narrative because there's so much more you can do. And and this is how I really have started to understand is that actually you can look at a negative and you can either stay in that fear vibration and really fight it, or you go, well, there's a negative there, so there must be a positive because the negative to be present, a positive has to be. I'm going to find the positive. And the what came to me really then was I can only explain as divine intervention was to say create health empowerment. And it was just this real drive that I wanted to create was to empower the people through their own awareness and choices. So you learned about energy healing and Reiki, and I can't help but notice that many intuitives tell me that the, the discovery of energy healing and Reiki and even sometimes even shamanism is their entry point to the intuitive world. Do you find that as well in your work and and your surroundings? I think Reiki holds more of a boundary to be able to allow you to access it. I think we're accessing it a lot, but we don't know it. And um, we have that intuition, we have that gut instinct, we have that inner knowing, um, yet we don't tend to value it so much when, when you have something like shamanism or reiki you start to understand you sort of understand it so it's like an essence that you're holding it as a boundary so yes it's once you've kind of recognized that there you're not just making it up that there's something of deep value within you you start to create that journey to understand more okay all right so it's not my imagination because that, that does come up quite a bit and it can be something as innocent as the going to get a massage or something similar and you find out that the practitioner has other modalities and next thing you know you're seeing sparkles and you know all kinds of otherworldly stuff and you start to think wow what exactly is this and maybe i should learn about it and that's your universe your, your probably your soul your guide bring taking you to that space when you've softened to allow yourself to trust that And then next thing you know, you've got that link with somebody else that's then opened another aspect of you. So Now, from energy healing and Reiki to the rise of the feminine, which is that the same thing as a divine feminine or is that something else? The rise of the feminine is still the same as the divine feminine. And yet it's, it's the individual and the collective. So we are all individually experiencing the divine rising of the feminine collectively. So it's, and for it to happen, it's to, for all of us to start to acknowledge it and accept it and create that process. And for me, the rising of the feminine is our hidden aspects. It's our, it's our sacred wisdom that's coming back to us. It's coming back. So that implies that the divine feminine was at some point in the history of mankind at a much higher perch or point, uh, for lack of a better description. Uh, It seems to also recall discussions about ancient civilizations, which I, I think we're going to talk about later. How did you come to really discover the divine feminine or were you always aware of it? No, I would say I've not certainly not been always aware of it. There's been aspects of me that um, just intuitively knew certain things would happen when I was younger, even, for instance, when I was seven. And I thought I just knew deja vu was parallel universes. I mean, I was seven. I didn't even know what 
parallel universes were. However, I would say with COVID, these last three years has been very significant in terms of, I think, having that stillness that we all had put upon us was moments of when you can start to access that feminine, that innate wisdom, because we're so conditioned to be busy. And somehow we all think there's something we've got to get to. There's like an end goal. So we've got to rush there and get it as quickly as we possibly can. So we're heavily in a very shadowed version of our masculine energy. Um, So when that got literally curtailed, people were in that, once they got probably through that initial wave of fear, there was enabling them to actually start to slow down and this is when soul the divine starts to started to catch up and this is why a lot of people have made lots of different choices to what serves them joy they've people have made a lot of life decisions relationship decisions work decisions so yeah and also you had a trip to sardinia that apparently had a profound impact which obviously influences the path you're on now can you tell us a little bit about that Oh yeah, that place is amazing, Johnny. If you haven't been there, you got to go there. So I went there only uh, June this year. And before then I was channeling when I was doing my work and um, meditations and um, a different language, which I had no understanding what it was, but it felt very earth-like. So I would get drawn to um, the goddess Isis and Mother Earth. It felt very kind of deep, sort of that kind of uh, vibration that was talking back up to me. So I went to, but then again, that part of me is going, am I going mad here? I'm talking a different language. It's probably a good sign. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) And I think good to be able to question it, but but also to accept it. So anyway, fast forward, get to Sardinia, literally land the 20th of June, get to the 21st, and which is summer solstice. And I could feel the vibration of the of Sardinia within my horror within like that so you have a chakra like just below your navel between your sacrum and I could sense the energy of of her basically and for me she is Atlantean she has this essence of very divine feminine I mean the didn't see the sacred sites but there's many sites that are designed for the female genitals, basically, that's it's all very sacred uh, sites that people would go within, basically. So heading through, like the vulva and then the clitoris, and there was, so it's a lot set up for that. And but for me, I could just feel this fire energy, this power that's within her, and even I because it's cut, it's surrounded with mountains, and they would have, would have expected an island like that to be actually volcanic. But for me, I just knew that it's the ma- there are actually mountains, but it flooded, which goes back to the whole stories of Atlantean or, you know, Noah and the Ark, all these mass of civilizations and mythology that have come back to there was a mass flooding at some point on our world. Atlantis, divine feminine, ascension, these are things that we're hearing a lot about these days now especially the atlantis factor is really really fascinating other than channeling do you have perhaps past life memories about that about atlantis or is it basically just imagery or perhaps beings that you channeled okay so this has happened a lot stronger as well since being in sardinia i was channeling but also drawing sacred geometry shapes in the sand which fortunately for me, there was a gentleman there that understood what I was doing and knew that I was actually speaking Sardinian and drawing Greek mythology, which was linking to the seeds of the dead, which was the pomegranate where Persephone, the maiden energy got taken. So in answer to your question, for me, it was just like an inner knowing, just a, um, Actually, where I've had previous past lives, it felt separate, but the emotion was with me. With me, this time forward, it felt just like me. It was just a part of me that was sharing something different. It didn't feel separate. And growing from then, this Atlantean, I have certainly gone back as a high priestess this last month 
especially with the Lionsgate that we've just experienced in um, in August. It was very powerful, and really feel that once a high priestess, but could sense the separation from the high priest, which is when I got I got taken to when it started to fall, and the fear that came from from that, and that's when the civilization started to fall down basically because of that that fear which we've heard about many times how long ago do you suppose this was any idea so i have no idea it's more than two thousand years ago it's probably more yeah, i'm yeah. thinking it's saying like twenty five thousand. this sort of a number it's, it's quite some considerable amount of time now from your experience do you have a glimpse into what the religious practices were perhaps at that time or not necessarily i haven't however what i can sense was there was a lot of the connection to mother earth and that was the this so this is the the fifth element so earth has this capacity to create it has this very powerful energy that creates life here and the only way I can sort of understand was that the you had men and, and women were equal. And it was perceived probably this is that this is where it started to go wrong, was that the women had more power because they were able to create life and they had that access to this fertile, fertile energy, the ability to create life itself and the um, energy of, of the earth itself. And but the woman couldn't act, the female couldn't access that without the male. So, but she, even though the female was accessing very high energetic vibrations, it wasn't, it was only because the male held that place, the masculine. So the feminine was as, accessing this pure energy, this power, but it was because the masculine was being able to hold that space. However, it started to fall apart because of the fear, the masculine fear of the feminine having that power. And that's when this, it started to chip away. Okay. The reason I bring that up is because when you talk about how Mother Earth had, and obviously still does, have power, that seems to be consistent with what we hear from people who practice shamanism. And the church, Catholic Church, has been suppressing our mystic and shamanic uh, past for centuries. What is your insight into that, if you have any at all? When you, well, so when you look into that, that was a uh, separation. So I'll bounce back to high pre um, Atlantean because it was at that point that um, high priests were setting themselves up as they were the power to connect through. And this is what we have seen with religion that has said that you can only access your power via us and people gave away their power people came into that and decided that was the truth and they gave away and they actually will, willingly disempowered themselves and this is what i'm seeing that actually we're shifting that now we're actually here to re-empower ourselves and definitely the the religion took away uh, that ability to continue what they've known, their connection to the planet, the connection to the moon and to the stars, and to really recognize that innate wisdom that's within us and around us, which the Egyptians would follow, as you see, you know, in terms of whole astrology, everything's sort of set up according to sort of signs and uh, sort of key moments of our of our heritage there. And definitely, you know, you even get churches being put on key ritual sites which would have been used and so it was kind of like a for me it feels like it's a clamping down you know so you've got ley lines which hold the energy of the earth which a lot of churches are actually placed on those you'll find certain churches will be placed in those key areas and even wells or places where pagans would have had rituals a church got slapped on so it's kind of like this is your route now of connection rather than through their earth, just the earth and through their bodies themselves. And I think the lid's coming off that. And I 
think actually passed our dear queen that passed over a year ago. I see that's also going to be coming off that lid that's going to be coming off um, in terms of how people have been suppressed and disempowered. Okay, so you would agree with the fact that the church has, for actually millennia, uh, they've been suppressing our mystic and shamanic past. Yeah, when you read back, you look back at Roman, it was the Romans, a lot of that started to happen when they would, you know, the people were killed if they were called peasants, and then it was pagans, and then you worship the devil if you don't do anything but worship God. And, and I think that's really, that has just contained people in fear and separation. And look at what COVID did as well that brought up fear and separation and the shadows of our society so this is looping back to the rising of the feminine is that she she's coming up to show us all our can I swear on this am I allowed to swear or not yes anyway I'll do our, anything that serve, doesn't serve us you know it's all about everything that is does that's been in our shadows of society is actually now coming up to, to show us what no longer serves us and what disempowers us. And it can look quite scary because it can look very overpowering and over controlling. And, you know, we're seeing war still. And it's all, a, this is about, it's like a massive detox. It's like a rush of water, which is what the feminine is. And it's about kind of really rising up to show us what we need to clear, which we will see in ourselves as well. I like that term, detox. I'm assuming that might have something to do from moving from the 3D world to a 5D world. Yeah, because I don't. We can't access 5D. We're in fear and separation. So to access that higher vibration, which for me is about being in the heart, that heart consciousness, we have to look at our lower vibrations. So if you think about shame and guilt, there's something like 30 hertz. It's very, very low, which has, again, the same frequency of lead. So alchemy, alchemy is talked with through the fire, you bring what turn lead into gold. So how can we transmit these low vibrational energies consciously to a high vibration to be of love, joy, and peace? That's great. Is there an easy way to do that or it doesn't sound easy? It's not easy if you're not conscious. If you're conscious of it, it's easier. And when things, so for instance, if you're going through a torrid time of a relationship of one individual and you kind of go, oh, this is just awful. And you're just going in this massive whirlpool of just guilt, shame, fear, anger. If you can't get off that loop, by recognizing that actually this this situation is here to present to me some low vibration stuff that I'm carrying for me to shift it and detox it. As soon as you can go, well, what's this teaching me? What's What am I learning from this? You have an objectivity to have then the opportunity to go, well, I don't continue this cycle. I choose to be of love. I choose to be of joy, of peace. And then you start to get this equilibrium, this 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 moment of bit like between how I'm feeling it now, you know, between the changing of the tides, there's that moment of stillness, that moment between when you take your next breath, there's that point of when you discern as to what you need and what you don't need. And that is the magical moment of when you go, well, I don't want that anymore. I heal it. I need, it's, it's this, and that is the divine feminine as well. It's that moment of stillness that you can hold for yourself to go, I no longer need that vibration. That person is actually, what I'm wanting from that person is more respect. Well, actually what I need to do is I need to give myself more respect. I need to love myself more. And as soon as you change that vibration of who you are, this done. Because we are, if we're ultimately energetic beings, energy attracts energy. So when you start to recognize the frequency that you're at, your subconscious, because that plays out for 99% of our thoughts and our actions. So we have to try and do a lot of conscious work to connect to that, to go, are you actually working on my favor here? Are you creating what I really want? Are you, is your coordinate set up to be what I actually desire? You can then start to start flushing out, detoxing all these lower vibrations through your, this life, and for your unconscious body that's your you've inherited through through our ancestors. 
because not just our DNA, we, we inherit the emotions too. So there's a lot of trauma that's gone on in this lifetime, in humanity, and we're here to break those patterns and to shift it. So those patterns can be inherited from ancestors in terms of vibrating at a certain frequency. I just, for some reason, I just thought about, it'd be really cool if there were an app that you can have online, your, like your iWatch or otherwise your phone, that could you could look at it and say, oh man, I'm only at like 44 uh, hertz. I got to I got to up my game. I think there could be something in that, Johnny. I think if you could have someone that I think there even it are some form of um, devices that you can attach to yourself to see what frequency you're at. I would think there there would have to be right. I think there is. I, I'm. I, there's something called Q. I'm sure. Anyway, but it's just it's something that you yeah you can actually read your frequency. I mean they can put. Um, devices on trees and set it attune it to certain um chords and the trees will sing back so as they record in trees we can start oh just yeah just know our symphony what what's our what's our tune we're playing all right well since we're talking about frequencies and uh not so long ago alchemy you believe that man has become fixated on gold money and also women in control for thousands of years. And what's the easiest explanation for that? And what else do we need to know? Mm, good one. Well, this has come up for me the last few months, which includes the Sidonia. And it's all about money, sex, power, control, and how the feminine energy is the gold. It's that fertility. It's that creation. And this relates back to the Greek mythology that was coming up, which was Persephone, who was taken by Hades, Hades or Pluto, and taken down into the earth. And But what came up from that was non-consensual. It wasn't his to take. And there's been this fixation of when women, girls come to a certain age, they're whipped off, they're taken, you know, and it's like they were possessions. And so sex and money sort of are really interlinked and the gold aspect when i connected to persephone this part the feminine energy that got taken and taken underground she's gold and it's it's this whole healing of this feminine line that's coming up and and it just feels like that the, Again, when you listen to what happened in Atlantean time, it was the fixation to try to create through on the earth and take that fertile, that life force of what creates life, that magic energy that has you and I here right now and everybody else. It's, it's, it, was, it was an attempt to bring science to manipulate that, whereas actually science can't do that. And I think this is... This is what's coming up. And Persephone, when I've connected to her, she is like an immortal treasure. So she's been like a sleeping beauty. And when you look at that and you go through the story of this pomegranate seed going underground, you talk about sleeping beauty, where she took the apple seed and has fell asleep. There's so much correlation that links back to this. And this is about the feminine now coming coming back and actually science now are getting confused because they're actually seeing what they call wobbles of muons particles on quantum physics they're starting to see that there's a fifth elemental force coming into our planet right now is persephone from the atlantean times and if so your connection with her is it strictly through channeling is it just reaching across the veil what what exactly is it so persephone is like the greek version of um, mother earth's daughter who got taken um so it's that fertile the maiden energy and um my connection has really come from her from being in sardinia where i was on the sand and channeling and just being in meditation and i was just drawing these shapes coming forwards and feeling her and it is and Pluto's involved with this. So Pluto is actually, if, you, if you're an astrologist fan, there he's actually in retrograde and he's bringing up everything since 2008 where he went into Capricorn, where the banks, was the Laham brothers went under? It's, it's bring, which again is linking to money. It's all, 
he's literally skirting the bottom and bringing everything back up for us to work through as a society and and individually too uh, but for me to access her it, it is through me- more meditation that stillness that connection more meditation okay so if you were to try and explain this to a bunch of like ninth grade you know history students what would you tell them i think what i would do would actually get them to connect to themselves so i the first thing you said that to me i would have them put their hands on their hearts and start to tune them back into their body because ultimately i can talk come up with so many different words of what i can relate to to communicate it back out however so everyone's truth is actually within them and your heart is where your truth is that's where your innate wisdom and your guts that's where we have so for me to waffle on to somebody i believe it's more for them to find it in them right to feel it rather than try to get it from an external entity which is why i brought up the suppression of uh the church suppressing our mystic and shamanic past which if you think about it shamanism is probably about 40 50 000 years old if not older and that's not even counting going back to Atlantean times, and I'm sure they had their practices and their modalities as well. The whole point of that, and I had someone on the show a while back, uh, her name is Betty Kovach, and her point was the church basically inverted the myth and made us worship a God outside of us instead of within us. And every time I talk to an intuitive, including uh, today, the conversation eventually goes to the answers are from within. Yeah, because everything, we're our water, everything, because we're 70% water, the planet's 70% water, it carries the memory of everything. Even the universe, they say that water wasn't actually here, it came through the universe to come to our planet. So we carry the wisdom of absolutely everything already in us. It's hard for a lot of us to imagine that. It does make sense to me, but to tell someone everything's within you, I think you have to agree that it sounds like a big ask, does it not? Totally, because we've been conditioned as everything's outside of us that we need to know, you know, so our schooling system, everything, it's like you need to know all these maths, which actually when you come to it, you don't, you know, unless you're going to design some rockets or, you know, so we don't necessarily know everything from outside of us, but do we need to know that? So actually the concept is everything I need to know is within me. But we even carry the vibration and frequency as we literally, as we come here as dust, we leave as dust and we're all coming back up and rising up from the same earth. So we're all carrying like a vibration intelligence of everybody else. So we are all interlinked in that way. And our brains can't compute it really. And, and this is why the heart intelligence comes in because that's 5,000 times the frequency of our mind. So our hearts are frigging powerful and our brains will always want to categorize things. That's just how it, how it rolls. Whereas with the heart, when it's in that vibration of love, it's very all true and expansion and that's where we all connect, that, that frequency. So speaking of the heart, how do we start what you describe as a heart conscious revolution to liberate ourselves and our souls and humanity for that matter? We have to start going within. We have to create time for ourselves. We have to start do the self-reflection work. And when things aren't playing out for us, rather than projecting it or blaming others and separation, we have to start taking responsibility to understand what what's happening within us, what's our vibration, what frequency are we generating to attract those behaviors. And you start that process and you start to understand yourself better. You start to have a higher perspective on things. That's when you when you start to come out from fear and more into love space, you hold a higher perspective on situations. So you can start holding more compassion for other people, even though they may be different or but you're more accepting of that difference and it's that's when you start to weave this web or ladder for us as a collective to start to 
rising up. That's how that's how I see it. But it's 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 the internal work we that we need to work on ourselves. It seems to be pretty well aligned with moving from 3D to 5D, moving away from fear towards like a group consciousness, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I saw at the very beginning of COVID was this massive web, web of light, and it was connecting everybody. And it's a real weird one because there's an element of trust to it. You have to sort of surrender to it, to the innate wisdom that's in you to allow you to take those little steps. And because for a lot of us, letting go of control is huge. It's a massive illusion that we believe that we have, that we can control things. Because the only things we can actually do is our control our thoughts, even that we can sometimes have trouble with, but our actions. And everything else is beyond us. So the grand illusion is we can control things other than our thoughts and even our emotions. Correct. Yeah. But when you're in more consciousness, you can start to really work through your thoughts and your emotions um, rather than the subconscious playing out the same stories and patterns that have been basically there for, for our, for generations. So being heart powered is the answer. I believe so. Heart over mind. Okay. I like that. That's something that I don't, I don't think we can really uh, wear out that expression too much, at least not, not anytime soon. So last question, imagine a world where money didn't exist and time didn't equate to money. And the only true currency was joy and self-worth. Is this a marker of an advanced civilization? And if so, was that a civilization that existed thousands of years ago? I believe for everything that's been coming through is yes, there's going to be a big shift. It can seem quite out there right now. I don't think how on earth does that ever change when we've got a whole world fixated on money and earning it to survive and to live. However, there's, there's a real shifting of vibration of why we do things and it's for the joy of it. Anything that's doing it because we think we should be doing it is just going to collapse. It's just a very low guilt, shame, vibration. You do something because it's joy and you're ex coming from a space of self-expression. That's your self-worth. You're owning it. You're owning who you are, what you're here for, your soul purpose, your divine feminine energy that's actually your blueprint for everything that you are here to do. You start to live life in your joy, in your purpose, in your passion. This then creates the vibrations and the continuous energy and what you gain from that. And that's just a massive higher energy for us to interact. And yes, I believe it happened before. I don't think there was money before. Money, I think, just has created separation and um, division. And I have been shown that it will be different. Ditch your perceptions of money because something's going to change and, and it's going to be good. It's going to be very good. It's, 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 I haven't been shown any more than that. And I don't even know when that's going to happen. Because you knew that was my next question. When that going to happen? It's probably, it's probably going to happen in our next two or three lives. It's probably not going to be this one. But I've been privy to certain discussions, and like I said before, I I don't know whether that's going to happen. But I've been told a it has happened before, and b it will and may even be happening right now in other galaxies or other worlds that we're not really exposed to yet. As you said that, I said, had this sense of. Yes, there's, it's happening out already, but in another paradigm because we've got different paradigms going on all the time. So it feels like it's bringing together, but we're having to, lots of our other paradigms have been from fear base and negative responses that have co created these shards of energy going off all in the different directions. We're bringing it all together, but we have to heal those low aspects to be able to come to that higher. That sounds really, really interesting. And I'm looking forward to the day or the time that that becomes a reality here on earth, although I'm, it might not be in this lifetime. In the meantime, is there anything else that we need to know? I think we have to trust and we have to make sure we spend time for ourselves to really start diving deep and to know that you have a choice and that choice is your power. 
And it's only fear that tells you you don't have a choice. So we start claiming back and we know we've got choices. We can make changes of conscious choices, basically, to make these changes that we desire in our own lives and the whole world itself. I like it. Moving away from the fear. Excellent. Gemma, thanks so much for joining us today. In the meantime, how can our listeners find you online? Okay, so the best way would be, so website is theinfinityhealthhub.com, uh, where you can subscribe for free for elements of my work that I'm putting out there as well. You've got the Instagram, the Infinity Health Hub, and Facebook as well. Exactly the same. Excellent. I will put those links in the transcript and the show notes as well. You've been listening to Closer to Venus. I'm Johnny Burke. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing. In the meantime, you can find more info on closertovenus.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>